there is something that is brewing on God's heart. It is really, really close to God's heart. It's something that many of us don't talk about, but it is something that God is going to use as we grab this and take a hold of it, that he's going to use it so that we can see revival and reformation until Jesus comes to earth again. This is something that we as a church need to start to walk in now because it's available. And so please join me and stay as I now give you this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Welcome, my name is Arlene Westerhoff and it is a joy and an honor for me to be able to do these broadcasts every week to encourage and to build you up and also to give you new vision and to motivate you to run with the calling that God has on your life. Now, a few weeks ago, I started to talk about the fact, you know, that it's time for us to leave an inheritance. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says, a good man and woman leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Now, you know, that is a verse that keeps rattling around on my insides. The Lord, every day, he keeps repeating that verse to me. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And so I've been asking myself, you know, what is the inheritance that I am leaving behind for my children's children? And I needed to think back to my mother and to my grandmother. Obviously my father too, but my mother and my grandmother, and I will add my father too, to that. My dad, you know, he came from Jamaica. My mom did too, and my grandmother. I was born in Jamaica in the West Indies. And actually I'll start with my grandmother. My grandmother, every, you know, not every day, but as often as I can remember, you know, the times that I had with my grandmother when we were still in Jamaica, my parents immigrated to Canada when I was five years old. And so I was very, very young. These memories are coming back from a long time ago. And I remember, you know, just walking with my grandmother and she would always ask me to help her. And my grandmother had a large, large garden in her home, very large. And so I remember she would ask me to carry the water can. And I was five and the water can was almost as big as I was. It's a funny thing to remember now. But I was so honored that she asked me and she would just fill it to half of its capacity with water, because that was all I could carry. And then I would walk with her through the garden, you know, as she pruned and as she weeded, and then I would give her the water can when she needed it so that she could water those plants. And as I helped her, she started to tell me, you know, stories. Back in those days, we had something called Aesop's fables. Many of you may not know them, but they were stories using animals to teach children life lessons. For example, one of Aesop's fables was the tortoise and the hare. The hare, you know, is a muscly rabbit, a very fast animal. And the tortoise and the hare one day they decided to have a race. And so they spoke to their friends, the friends arranged a race and the race went over quite a distance. You know, and the hare, he thought, this is a no brainer. I'm just gonna beat the tortoise because a tortoise is a land turtle. We all know that turtles are slow beasts. And so on the day of the race, you know, it was just the guns found it, the starter's pistol, and the tortoise and the hare, they were off. You know, and the tortoise, he ran and ran and ran for a while. And when he looked behind him, he couldn't see the hare anyway. The hare was just progressing very, very slowly. And so what did the tortoise, or so what did the hare do? The hare, he saw a lake in the distance, you know, on the left side of him. And so he went to the lake and he had a swim because it was a warm day. And yeah, he had something to eat and he fell asleep and he was just relaxing and rejoicing, you know, in the warmth of the day. 
Anyway, much, much later, the tortoise woke up. And as he woke up, you know, he went back to the track and, or that, you know, just that course that he and the tortoise were running along. And to his shock and his horror, way ahead, way ahead in the distance, just about to cross the finish line, he saw the tortoise. And so the hare started to run. He ran with all of the speed that he had in him. But just as he was about to cross the finish line, the tortoise crossed first and the hare lost the race. That was one of Aesop's fables. And what was the moral of that story? Slow and steady wins the race. You know, I realize what imprinting, what a good job my grandmother did with imprinting those life lessons on me because I am much, much older than five years old now. And those lessons have stayed with me all my life, slow and steady. Keep on going and you will win the race. <clears throat> anyway, that was one of them. And I remember my grandmother spending time with me <coughs> and, and just imprinting me. As I said, we left Jamaica at f when I was five, but those lessons have stayed with me all my life. That was an inheritance that she left behind for me. <coughs> she wasn't able to see, you know, what I would become. But the thing is, those lessons have literally formed me and helped to propel me to some of the areas where God is using me now. Another one who has left an inheritance for me that's just been incredibly valuable was my mother. I've spoken it about it before on these weekly words. But when I came to the Netherlands, my mom got very, very ill. And I wanted to return to Canada to be with her. And she just said, no, Arlene, I do not want you to return. You are in the place where God would have you. And so stay and do the will of God. I found it really, really difficult. Could not understand how she could ask me to stay away from her. But it's only, you know, in the last few years that I'm starting to appreciate the sacrifice that she made by insisting that I stay in the will of God for my life instead of coming to be with her when she was so ill. You know what? Her life is still bearing fruit through me today. And what she taught me, her inheritance in my life was when things get tough, you follow the will of the Lord and do not deviate from it. And you know what? Then there's my dad. You know, my dad, he grew up in a family that wasn't always happy for him. And uh, my dad, you know, he grew up and as he grew up, he knew that he was not the favorite son. And that really just marked him. And it really caused him to become a very angry man for many, many years in his life. And so as a result, you know, my dad, yeah, he was just angry. And one day Christ radically saved him. But you know what? It was just, it was such a night and day turn of his life. And he became an evangelist. He led many to the Lord before God called him home to glory. But what did my father give me? Even before he was saved, he gave me the saying and the belief that I can do anything I put my hand to. If I'm willing to apply myself, then I can do anything that I want to do. And you know what? That is something that has stood with me all of my life. I am a woman. I'm a leader. I'm a, yeah, I'm a leader in Christ, in the body of Christ. I'm a leader in the world, in the areas that God has placed me. And that's because of my dad, Arlene. Do not let people think less of you than you are. You can do anything you want to do.
And my dad's encouragement was so incredibly important in my life. We moved to Canada at a time where there were not many black people. And, you know, my story is one of just saying I'm so appreciative to Canada that we were able to move there. It was an amazing place to grow up. But he taught me what it meant not to allow other people's opinions of myself to cause me to think lower of myself than God thought of me. And I just, you know, I'm thankful to him until today because those are life lessons from my grandmother, from my mother, from my father that I get to pass on now to those who I mentor and who I disciple. And so as the scriptures say, a good man or woman leaves an inheritance to their children's children. The inheritance that I want to leave and I want to pass on to you today is that you are more than you think you are. God has more in store for you than you can even ask or imagine. If you are watching this and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you can pray a simple prayer. And that is, and prayer, by the way, is just talking to God. And that is, Lord Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart. Father, forgive me for the things that I have done or that are against your will. Forgive me. I have sinned, Lord. And Lord, I ask you now to come into my heart, to be Lord of my life and to lead me and guide me and direct me. You know what? If you prayed that prayer, then I'm just going to ask you, you know, just to write in the comments to let me know so that I can give you some resources online, you know, that will help you to grow further. But this is my inheritance that I want to leave behind. You are a son, you are a daughter of the Almighty God, and you can do much, much more than you think you can because of the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than all that we can ask or think. And so I bless you with the ability to see yourself as God sees you this week. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. This is my inheritance to you. And I pray for you this week that the Lord will show you what your inheritance is that you are called to leave behind for future generations because as we do, then we will see change come until Christ returns. God bless you, and I look forward to having you join me next week on my weekly word of prophetic encouragement.